Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsland and all the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 31st of May. India brings 100 tons of gold back to domestic wars. Pakistan election with biggest robbery claims XPM Imran Khan. And Bangladesh opposition accuses PM Hasina of destroying the economy, snatching rights. And after all the details. In a major move, the Reserve Bank of India on Friday shifted over 100 tons of gold from the UK within the country. A similar quantity of the precious metal might be coming to the country in the coming months, local media reported, adding that the move was for logistical reasons and diversified storage. Sanjeev Sanyal, member of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, taking to X, said that India will now hold most of its gold in its walls. He further said that most countries keep their gold in the walls of the Bank of England or some such location. Gold has been in demand for a considerable period, with its prices rallying to hit record highs now and then. Geopolitical conflict in West Asia that stretched for a long time, buying by several central banks including RBI and physical demand, have altogether pushed gold prices northwards. Post the government's approval, 20 tons of confiscated gold were sent abroad to raise foreign exchange reportedly to the tune of $234 million. And India once again expressed its opposition to China-Pakistan economic corridor, reiterating that Beijing-led project goes against New Delhi's territorial integrity and sovereignty. Answering a query regarding the increased cooperation between Pakistan and China, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal said New Delhi has a very consistent position regarding the projects in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir and that the whole region is part of India and will continue to remain so. Our position on CPEC also is well known to you. We are not in favor of it. We are against it, he added. This comes after Pakistan Foreign Minister Rishak Dar and his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in a meeting vowed to further upgrade and expand the cooperation over CPEC. The initiative in Pakistan-occupied territory is a component of China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative. India has multiple times opposed the project, which is often condemned to be part of Beijing's expansionistic ambitions. So on Pak, you know, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, our position is, we are very consistent in our position. We have been, we want to tell you that uh, the whole of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, the Indian territories, they are part of India, integral part of India, they were in integral part of India, they are integral part of India and they will remain integral part of India. Our position on CPC also is well known to you. We are not in favor of it. We, uh, we, uh, we are against it. For it, it goes against our territorial integrity and sovereignty. And Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI Supremo Imran Khan on Thursday said the February election was the biggest robbery of a public mandate as the national election was stolen from his party. In first remarks to be heard in open court since he was jailed in August, Khan said his party is being victimized and added there have been gross human rights violations by authorities. Imran Khan's PTI-backed candidates won the maximum seats in general elections held in February but fell short of a majority required to form a government. In a minority coalition, his arch rival Shehbaz Sharif became Prime Minister after he joined hands with several other parties. However, Khan's PTI has claimed the election was rigged against them, an allegation denied by the Election Commission of Pakistan. Moving on. Days after Pakistan police arrested 11 militants involved in deadly suicide attack on Chinese engineers, Pakistani delegation met Taliban authorities and urged decisive action against the accused. The victims were working on a China-funded hydropower project as part of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor in northwestern Pakistan. The Taliban agreed to examine the findings of the investigation and expressed a resolve to work with Pakistan to take the investigation to its logical conclusion. 
Pakistan says the attack was planned in Afghanistan and that the bomber was an Afghan citizen, an accusation Taliban denies. No group has claimed the responsibility for the attack. And Colombo has once again slammed Canada for spreading false narrative of genocide in connection to the decades-old conflict that took place in Sri Lanka. The development came during the meeting of Canadian Deputy Minister for International Development, Christopher McLennan, and Lankan Foreign Secretary Aruni Vijayvardhane earlier this week. In a statement, the Lankan Foreign Ministry said Vijayvardhane expressed Sri Lanka's deep concern regarding high-level pronouncements made in Canada in recent years, representing a false narrative of genocide in Sri Lanka. The Foreign Secretary requested Canada to engage with Sri Lanka in a constructive manner and facilitate dialogue and reconciliation, the statement added. Earlier this month, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had called May 18 as Tamil Genocide Remembrance Day, triggering sharp reaction for Sri Lanka. In a sharp response, Colombo rejected the allegation of genocide and in turn accused the Canadian Premier of engaging in vote bank politics. Moving on, the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party on Thursday took a jibe at country's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and alleged that Bangladesh is now completely under the grip of mafias and plunderers. The party's Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir said that Hasina is snatching political rights of people as well as destroying the economy. The BNP leader also said the current government's main goal is to turn Bangladesh into a failed state by depleting its assets. BNP has long accused Hasina of authoritarianism. PM Hasina has refuted the charges and has termed the opposition party a terrorist organization. She has repeatedly condemned the protests by the opposition and said BNP has been involved in violent protests, killing hundreds of innocent Bangladeshis, so it cannot be called a democratic party. And a severe heat wave in India and Pakistan is pushing temperatures beyond 45 degrees Celsius, causing widespread health issues and disrupting daily activities. Power outages and water shortages are exacerbating the crisis, leaving people struggling to cope. A report. Residents in parts of Indian capital New Delhi are facing an acute water shortage due to extreme heat wave situation, leaving people waiting along the roads with plastic containers and barrels under the blazing sun. India has been experiencing a blistering hot summer and a part of capital Delhi recorded the country's highest ever temperature at 52.9 degrees Celsius this week. Reports suggest as many as 15 people have died so far in states of Odisha and Bihar due to suspected heat stroke. pipeline, water tanker. tanker, full tanker. आदि आने के बाद भी इतनी संख्या होने के बाद भी आदि लोग बढ़ते मतलब एक रुपए होती है ना उसमें से 25 लोग बढ़ते 75 लोग पानी भर ही नहीं पाते Similarly in Pakistan's Lahore people continue to swelter under high temperatures at least 72 residents in the city were admitted to different public hospitals with heat stroke in the past 24 hours billions of people across asia including india and pakistan have been experiencing a hot summer this year a trend scientists say has been worsened by human driven climate change the number jo hai for last one week wo dramatically increase ho gaya so jo pehle ek aad patient tha wo 15 20 patient se lekar 30 40 patient daily aana shuru ho gaye jinko कुछ को इब्तिदाई लामात होती हैं जस्ट फीवर है हेडेक है और जो क्लासिकल हीट स्ट्रोक के पेशेंट हैं वो भी रिपोर्ट होना शुरू हो गए हैं दैट्स ऑल इन टुनाइट एडिशन विल सी यू सेम टाइम नेक्स्ट वीक हैव अ ग्रेट वीकेंड गुड नाइट टैग टीवी ब्रिंग्स यू डेली न्यूज़ बुलेटिन फ्रॉम इंडिया ब्रेकिंग न्यूज़ एंड व्यूज़ फ्रॉम इंडिया